this lake was built in the uh, early 60s uh, by the Department of Fish and Wildlife with construction of I-75 here. It's about a 96 surface acre lake. It was stocked by the department back when it was built. Uh, the big species here are, uh, have been bluegill, red ear sunfish, uh, some crappie and largemouth bass and uh, channel catfish. The species for management here primarily are the panfish such as bluegill and red ear sunfish. Henley and bird lower lake, Ross and uh, Benel helping him out. Y'all are splitting uh, 17 gallons, right? Yep. You got 10 and seven squared away. It's a pretty complex situation when you have gizzard shad present in a small impoundment like Corinth. It's caused our bluegill fishery basically to crash. Uh, we had some quality, you know, eight inch bluegill and larger. Had some good bluegill here. And now over the last six, seven years, that fishery has taken a nosedive just because the shad are present. You know, maybe in some lakes they're fine, but in this lake, in this situation, even though it's almost 100 acres in size, shad will upset the fish population, the balance here. And by that, you know, they'll overpopulate. You've got, yeah, you've got bass eating them, but there's also a disadvantage of having the shad there where they compete with the little bass for food. So they actually act to suppress the bass population. A lot of anglers think that, hey, shad's the best. You know, it's good food for bass. They eat them, they'll grow and everything. That's not it. That's not the way it is. Bass aren't controlling them. So the bluegill go downhill, they overpopulate. Uh, they eat themselves out of the available food, so they don't grow as well. We gotta go in and try to remove them. So we've got this chemical called rotenone that gizzard shad are very sensitive to. Uh, more sensitive than say the sport fish, like bass, bluegill, crappie, catfish, shellcracker. And uh, so we know we can put in a, uh, a light dose or a light concentration of this rotenone and we can remove the shad during cold weather conditions. That's one reason we do it in the winter. There's not very many people around. We have seven two-person crews. We'll be here all day. A little siphon-like thing on the, on the propeller down there at the lower part of the engine. When we move along, it'll automatically suck the water and the whole mixture out into the lake. You'll be able to see it go through the glass too. The rotenone we're applying is in a very low concentration. It has no effect on the waterfowl here, the wildlife, uh, pets. Something that's kind of a last resort. We watched the bluegill population here. After we found that it had shad present, we monitored the bluegill, the red ear, the bass. We saw the impact that it was causing, and uh, we know it's time to, to do something. Our bluegill management lakes, like Corinth, we've established regulations that prohibit the use of shad as bait or the possession of shad here as bait or for whatever reason. And in this particular situation, you know, we feel like somebody has brought in shad, they've introduced them, and probably thinking they were helping the lake. Now, they didn't have enough information, you know, but the bottom line is that was illegal. It's wrong. See, you know, the weather conditions out here aren't the best. Uh, you never know what you're going to end up with weather-wise. You just try to make your best shot. Today we've got rain. Uh, we've got little wind, rain. It's kind of cold out there. It's kind of chilly. Nobody complains. And it's our goal to make fishing good. You know, for people that come here, that's the bottom line. Uh, sportsmen and women who've bought hunting, fishing licenses, who, you know, pay our salaries. We're working for those people. At, I like to think of ourselves as stewards of this lake and, uh, and the lakes in our district, the waters in our district. You know, we're stewards and uh, the sportsmen rely on us. Bottom line, this fishery here, this lake is going to be, uh, I mean, it's impact. It has been, it's been declining for several years and it's going to take, take a couple of years for it to improve. So, you know, you've got this lake uh, impacted for several years just because of someone's irresponsibility. 
If we catch you, you know, illegally stocking fish, I mean, there are fines. We don't want people uh, transporting different species of whatever, you know, into different bodies of water. You shouldn't do that. That's not responsible. And it's our goal to make fishing good.